Uh, Kimberly, I'd like to begin with you and start off from the issue of reporting violence in the first place. Now, a lot of facts and figures that we get don't truly depict the extent of the problem. I mentioned a couple of issues as to why reporting doesn't happen. What more do you, can you tell us about what really hinders people from coming forth? Well, I think part of the problem is, unfortunately, since the beginning of time, violence against women has been accepted part of many cultures. And so in addition for women to overcome that hurdle of wanting to report it, often they, they are confronted with the fact if they do report it, will they be taken seriously? So unfortunately, a lot of women, because violence is accepted in so many cultures around the world, from the U.S. to Afghanistan, it's just... They, they just feel like if they do report it, that they'll receive uh, more violent repercussions against them, um, which unfortunately happens quite often. Right. Um, and when we talk about these violent repercussions against them, what really takes, uh, what form do these reper uh, repercussions take? Well, often um, maybe, the, maybe the aggressor will become even more aggressive because they feel like the woman has spoken out against something that, um, that they did wrong, and so they uh, punish the women even further. And frankly, when I've often seen women who have tried to report violence to law enforcement, sort of microaggressions that they receive from law enforcement, by and large, the people that they'll report it to will be another man. And so that woman may not feel comfortable with telling her story to that man, and quite often, that man will not take her story seriously and will put her in an even worse situation than when she first came to report um, what was happening to her. And right. so I think that, um, you know, that that's what happened, unfortunately, in many households. Right.